you want to add some background music to your videos and you think I'm just going to drop it in the timeline, right? And you lower the volume and you're like, it doesn't sound good. My expectations are not being met here. So today I've got a ton of different tips, tricks, and techniques for you to try and use when it comes to your background music, just to elevate your videos, take it to that next level and make it sound better. Today's video is sponsored by Artlist. We're going to be getting our music tracks from Artlist. But for now, let's jump in Resolve, see the project that we're working on here, get inspired, and add some awesome background music to our videos. In DaVinci Resolve here, currently I'm in the Edit tab, and I'm working on putting together a little inspirational video. Let me just show you the first few seconds of it. I've got a bunch of different clips that hopefully just inspire people. I've got a voiceover track where I recorded a voiceover to go along with the video and our music. And here's what it's looking like so far, just so you can get a kind of feel of where the video is going. If you woke up one day and could do anything, what would you do? Who would you be? Okay, so it doesn't seem so great so far, right? We need that music to add in the feeling and just help you feel like you're connected to the video. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and grab our music track. So for my music, I'm going to head over to Artlist, the sponsor of today's video, and they've just got a ton of awesome stuff there. There's just so much great music, sound effects. You've got footage, you've got templates, you've got plugins, you've got a ton of stuff, pretty much all the assets you need to make an awesome video. And if you've never signed up for a trial with Artlist before, here's what the prices are. You can get everything from just your music and sound effects all the way up to a full package that will give you all of the videos, the assets, everything they have on there. It's so worth it, really just helps take your videos to the next level. So when I like to look for music, what I do is I typically will go to either one of the moods over here on the left, or I'll pick a different video theme if I know what the video theme is. And in this case, I wanted something that was kind of cinematic, right? I want something that's got a lot of feeling to it. So I found this song called Escape Velocity right here, and I can see it falls in the cinematic category. And it's about two and a half minutes long or so, and I know that the uh, inspirational video that I'm putting together is shorter than that. So I like this one. I went ahead and downloaded it. When I download it, I could do either a wave or an MP3. I typically do the MP3s, and that works out really well once I get into Resolve. In my DaVinci Resolve project here, I do have a folder for audio, and I did bring in two different songs because I was sampling some different things here. But this is the song that I want to use right here, and this is what it sounds like in the beginning, just to get a little feel for it. All right, so it sounds a little inspirational right off the bat, right? Now, here's a little bonus tip for you. If your music comes in really loud and you want to adjust it before you even bring it in your timeline, you can just click on your clip in your media pool. I can open my inspector, and I can actually lower the volume of the whole clip right here in the media pool. It's a cool little trick. Now, you don't have to do that. You can always adjust it in the timeline. But if you do it in the media pool here, once I bring it into the timeline, let's just say I brought it to, like, minus 26. If I bring it in the timeline, check it out. My volume's already set to minus 26. Pretty sweet, huh? But in this case, I'm just going to bring it in at full volume. So I'm going to reset the volume here in the inspector. I'm going to click on my clip. Drag and drop it in the timeline. Now, this is where most people are going to stop, right? You're going to adjust the volume a little bit, maybe. But in this case, we're going to do a few different tips and techniques here to make it sound even better. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that my background music is starting when my video starts. Because we can see in my music track here, I've got a little bit of dead space, and I don't want that. So I want to make my cut right here. I'm going to make a cut. We're going to delete the beginning, and then I'm just going to move my clip over. So now I'm going to play through my video here and see if this is where I want my audio to start. Am I happy with it? Let's just see how it sounds. All right, so that's good, but when the voiceover started there, I can't even hear that, right? So we need to work with the volume of this clip. Now, I could come in here and just lower the whole thing down, which is what most people are probably going to do, but then maybe that's not going to accomplish the way that I want the music to sound. So if I just lower it down and say maybe eh, minus 21 dB-ish, here's what that sounds like. Let's see if I'm happy with that. If you woke up one day and could do anything, what would you do? Who would you be? Okay, so I could leave it like that. I mean, it's not terrible, but we could make it better. I want that music to swell and come down. I want the voiceover to be clear. So here's a real easy way that we can start with working with our volume for our clips. So I'm going to bring my volume back up. I'm going to leave it around maybe minus 7.5. And I'm going to come to where my dialogue starts, and I'm going to make a cut on my music track. So I'm just going to... Use my keyboard shortcut to make a cut there. I have mine mapped as S. And now what we can do is change the volume of two, these two different clips. So let's say I want this part to be a bunch quieter. I'm going to bring this down to maybe minus 20. 
minus 21 looks good. But looking at this music clip, it's just going to go from loud to quiet and make a hard jump right there. So what you can do is come into your effects library. I'm going to open that up, close my media pool here. I'm going to come to my audio transitions. And in my audio transitions here, we've got three different transitions, a plus 3 dB, minus 3 dB, and just a 0 dB fade. So I'm going to grab the 0, going to drop it on here. And now let's hear how that sounds, see if it's what we are kind of going for here with the volume change of our clip. If you woke up one day and could do anything, what would you do? Who would you be? All right, so that works pretty good. Now, if I didn't have that, let me just delete that. Here's what that would sound like. If you woke up one day... It's too harsh of a transition, right? So by adding in the little bit of a crossfade, it's going to automatically fade the clips for us. And let's say maybe I needed to move this transition or I wanted to add another one. I'm going to come here. I'm going to make another cut on my music track. And then I'm going to add in another crossfade there. And actually, I could click, hold, and drag the crossfade on here. Or another quick tip here for you is if I have my playhead right at the intersection of these two clips, I can right-click and just say, add a crossfade. And you can make it as long as you want. Let's say I do 25 frames. And now I want the music to come back up in volume after the voiceover is done, right? So I'm going to bring this up, and we're going to go back up to 7.5. And then I know once I get to here, I'm going to want it to drop down again, right? So that you can hear the voiceover over top of the music clearly. So I'm going to select my music track, make a cut. I'm going to go ahead and right click. We're going to add the 25 frame crossfade and I'm going to lower the music down on this side to the same that we had over here. Now I could just eyeball it here by using my gain line. Oh, and another tip for you. If you don't see this gain line right here, you want to come into your timeline view options right here. And obviously you need your waveforms turned on and that should show you your gain line. You can try some of these different options if you're having trouble seeing the gain line, and that should help just make it stand out a little bit more for you. So instead of coming and grabbing this gain line, trying to match it up wherever my volume was on this clip, here's another tip for you. I could select the clip, control C to copy, come to my other clip that I want the same volume on, option or alt V. That's going to bring up this for us, and we want to come down to audio attributes, and I want to copy everything. So I'm just going to hit apply. And now we've got the exact same volume here as we did over here. And here's how that kind of sounds all together. If you woke up one day and could do anything, what would you do? Who would you be? Travel the world with friends. So that works pretty good, and it's really easy to do that. Now, let's say maybe I needed to adjust where this transition occurs. You know, I sounded a little close to the dialogue right here. I can just come here, hover over the intersection there of the two clips, I could click hold and drag and change where that point is. One over here, could go there. Want to go home over here and go there. So maybe I want it about right there. Really easy to move around where those volume changes happen. And here's what that sounds like. Who would you be? Travel the world with friends. Now, another tip for you here is when you bring in your music tracks into your timeline, you're going to notice that they're pretty loud, right? So if this was at zero dB, it's going to be loud. You're almost going to be peeking up into the red. So music is mastered so that it is loud, so that they can meet that maximum allowable volume or limit uh, for the music track. But in Resolve here, I always find that that's way too much, even if I have no dialogue around it. Typically, what I like to do is bring that down somewhere around what we did with this clip, either minus 7.5, minus 10 dB. Be, somewhere in that range is typically going to work out really well for your background music. So that's method one there on how you can work with some of the volume for your music there when it comes to your dialogue. Now, a little bit more advanced tip here is to use some keyframes, and we can do this right here in the edit tab. So what you're going to do is hold your option or alt key. Make sure you've got your arrow selected up here. We're going to come to the gain line, get the symbol that looks like this, and if we hold our option or alt key, we can click on that gain line, and it's going to add a keyframe point for us. And then we can move ahead a little bit, add another keyframe. And now we can adjust the volume of our music track on either side of the keyframes. And there's going to be a little transition between them. So maybe we bring this up like that. So here's how it sounds. And it's going to be a similar effect to what the crossfade does. With friends. And then maybe we need to add some more keyframes here to drop back down. I'm going to hold Option or Alt on a PC, Option on a Mac, come ahead, add my keyframe. And I'm going to lower the volume down after my second keyframe. And here's how that sounds. Old friends. Spend days on horseback. 
So that works too, and it accomplishes essentially the same thing, but with adding keyframes, you can have a little bit more flexibility of how you want that to sound. And in this case, it sounds like my two keyframes on this side over here, they could be moved over a little bit, right? I think it should be closer to the dialogue. So I can select my keyframe, and then I can click, hold, and drag to move it around. Now you're gonna notice it's gonna kinda move all over, but if I click, hold, and start to drag a little bit and then hold my shift key, it's only gonna go in a straight line. So I'm gonna bring this guy over to say here, I'm gonna select my top one, and I'm gonna hold shift and move it over a little bit, and let's try that and see how that sounds. Spend days on horseback. And that works out pretty good. Now, if I wanted to add, say, another keyframe in the middle here, I could add one in the middle, and then let's say I want it to get louder and the music to kind of swell up in between my other two keyframes. Here's how that would sound. World friends. Spend days on horseback. So a really cool technique there that you can build in your own swells or reductions there in the music track. Kind of cool when it's something that's happening in between your dialogue, right? We can help push the feeling in a little bit more by making the music a little bit louder. We can pull it back a little bit if we want it to be a little bit quieter. But lots of cool things here that you can do with keyframes in DaVinci Resolve to help make the music sound the way that you want it to sound and build in the feeling that you want for your music track in your video. So our first technique there with the crossfades was pretty easy. I think everybody out there can do that. Then we got a little more advanced by using the keyframes, and still, I think all you guys can do that. It's not as hard as it looks. A little bit of practice, and you're going to be a keyframe pro when it comes to your audio. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about here is a little bit more of an automated way to do things. It's a little bit more advanced, yet still easy enough that I think everybody out there can do it, and that is by using the auto-ducking feature here in DaVinci Resolve. Now, we're going to have to jump into Fairlight to do this so follow along here it's not too hard it will take a little bit of playing with settings and stuff for your particular clip but this is a cool feature because you can do it once and then you don't have to worry about adding crossfades or keyframes resolve will do everything automatically for you once you get it set up so this is another timeline of the exact same thing i've got the exact same music track in here and we're going to go ahead and create our automatic ducking here in davinci resolve and what does that mean that means that when the video gets to the dialogue parts, right? All these parts down in this track. The music will automatically get quieter so we can hear the dialogue a little bit better. And then when the dialogue stops, for example, from between here and here, the music volume will come back up automatically. We're not gonna have to do anything with it. We can set it. Resolve will do all the work for us. So to do this, like I said, we gotta jump into Fairlight, musical notes at the bottom. Now in Fairlight here, we need to have our mixer open because we need to use our dynamics to do this. So make sure your mixer is open at the top here. Come down to your mixer and we wanna to come to our dynamics section right here. If you don't see your dynamics, click on the three dots, make sure dynamics is checked on and you should see it right here in your mixer. You also may need to scroll up and down here with your middle mouse wheel a little bit, make sure you can see your dynamic. The first thing we need to do is come to our voiceover or dialogue track and we wanna open up our dynamics panel on that track. So I'm gonna go Head and double click, open that up. Now, if you needed to edit your dialogue or something, you can turn on the compressor and use it uh, if you need to. My audio track is already kind of set up, so I'm not gonna worry about that at this point because we're really worried about the music. But what we need to do in this dynamics window is to click on this send button right here. And what that's gonna do is send out our track to any other tracks that are gonna be listening. So once you click that send button, we're done on this. We can close that out. Then we wanna come to our music track here. We wanna double click our dynamics. And in our dynamics panel here, we wanna come down to the same section and we wanna turn on listen. So what's happening here now is that DaVinci Resolve is sending out our dialogue track and our music track is gonna to listen to it and can respond to our dialogue. So it'll be able to lower the volume of the music underneath the dialogue so we can hear the dialogue nice and clear. Now, once you've turned on your listen on your music track, we are gonna be using the compressor. So you can go ahead and turn on the compressor. And this is what is gonna tell DaVinci Resolve to lower the volume of the music when we hear any of our voiceover track. So if I play through a little bit now, let's see if it's doing anything and uh, see what we got. Okay, right off the bat, nope, it's not doing anything. So the first thing that we need to do to get the music to go below or get quieter underneath our dialogue is to lower our threshold. So our threshold just says at what dB level should the music start to go down. 
So I'm going to lower this back and I'm going to come to say minus 30 dB. Now the ratio is the next thing we want to look at. That is going to say, how much do I lower the music, right? Currently it's two to one. So for every two dBs, it's louder than our threshold. It'll lower it by one. Well, in this case, I'm going to lower it down quite a bit and I'm just going to look at the graph here. And I know when my music is playing below my dialogue, I want it to be somewhere a little below minus 20 dB. So I'm just going to put it right about there. And we're just going to see how that sounds. So let's play through our little section here with our vocal track or our uh, voiceover and our music. And let's see how it's working. If you woke up one day and could do anything, what would you do? All right. So you can see it's working there, but it sounds really choppy and really bad. So the next thing we need to do to help smoothen that out a little bit is come down to our attack, our hold and our release. So our attack tells us how soon should I lower the music volume as soon as I hear your voiceover track. So I want that to be eh, pretty quick, but I don't want it to just like hard cut off, right? So I'm going to bring it up. Let's just try 10 milliseconds to start. So the hold says, how long do you want me to hold that volume lower once there's no more voiceover track coming through? So in this case, I'm going to boost this up and I'm going to say half a second here. So I'm going to go with 500 milliseconds. And the release says, how quickly do you want the volume of that music to go from the quieter part that it'll be set at back to its original volume? So you don't want it to be too fast. Otherwise, it's just going to snap back to a loud volume, almost like you had a hard cut in there. So I'm going to bring up my release and make it a thousand milliseconds, which is one second. So let's go ahead and just play through this and see how we're sounding. If you woke up one day and could do anything, what would you do? Who would you be? Okay, so a few things I noticed. I think it took too long for that to start, so I'm going to lower my attack time. My hold, it didn't hold long enough because in between when the dialogue was happening, it seemed like it just it, it almost started to go back up a little bit. So I'm going to boost up the hold a little bit. We're going to make that one second, and I'm going to leave the release at one second. Now, the other thing that I could think about is if it sounds too loud right off the bat, kind of how we talked about earlier in this video, I might want to actually lower this down and start with it at a lower volume. So if I hold my shift key, I can get real exact with my numbers here when I grab my gain line. I'm going to lower that back down to 7.5 ish. There we go. 7.5, which is where we originally had it in our other timeline. So with these couple adjustments, let's hear how it sounds. Explore the wonder of nature. Camp in the countryside with the love of... So it sounds like it still needs a little bit more adjustments there. I'm going to try lowering my threshold back a little bit. I can actually use my knee to kind of help blend it in a little bit more. Let's go ahead and play through again and see how it sounds. If you woke up one day and could do anything, what would you do? Who would you be? Travel the world with friends. All right, so I think we did need to adjust our threshold a little bit. I brought it up just a little bit. Worked with my ratio just a little bit there, and I think we're in a pretty good spot. I did move the attack back up so it didn't kick in so fast. Also adjusted the hold down just a little bit to like half a second, or maybe we could even go a little bit more than that, and the release around 775. And I think this is working out pretty good, and once I set this up, I can just put any dialogue in the dialogue track, and the music will respond to any track that is getting sent out so that music track can listen to it. Now, you could further refine it by jumping into your voiceover or dialogue track and turning on the compressor in there and working with that a little bit. But what I really like about the auto ducking feature here is that if I have a long video with lots of different dialogue tracks, I don't have to go through and manually keyframe and do all that stuff. Resolve can do the work for me, right? Now, it does take just playing with the settings a little bit to get the desired result that you want. But makes it really quick and easy to have Resolve do the work for you once you set up those initial settings there in your Dynamics panel. And while we're here in Fairlight, I've got two more tips for you here on how we can make a little space in our music track so that our dialogue isn't competing with any of the frequencies and sounds that are in our music track. So let's check this out. The first one is an effect here that's built into DaVinci Resolve. So I want to come to my music track. I'm going to go ahead and click on the plus for my effects. I'm going to come down to Spatial, Fairlight Effects, and Stereo Width. Now, in here in our Stereo Width, what this is going to do is make our music sound like it's getting pushed out to the sides of my headphones so that the dialogue can live in the middle. Now, you can just come in here, click on the presets up here, and choose Max Separation. That should be it. You should be good to go. Now, sometimes you're going to notice that this will do more on certain music tracks than others. So let's solo my music track, do a little before and after here, see if we can hear the difference.
So can you hear that? It kind of just pushed out that audio a little bit to the right and left channels a little bit. So if you don't have right and left speakers or, you know, maybe you got headphones on, hopefully you can hear that. It just spreads it out a little bit, right? Now there are other plugins that I like to use uh, over this one that are third-party plugins that do an even better job of really pushing out that, uh, that audio. But if you don't have any of those plugins, this works awesome and I would totally use it. Now the second tip that I'm gonna give you here is a little bit of EQ. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on my EQ on my music track. And in my EQ here, we can remove some of the frequencies that compete with dialogue or speaking. And to do that, you can just grab your band four here. And I wanna just make a little cut somewhere in this, you know, between 500 and 2K range. Now we can make our cut a little bit wider there if we come down to our Q factor and just make this as low as we can. So we just wanna make a little cut in here. So let me play through the, the music there and I'm just gonna make the cut and you can kinda of hear the little bit of a difference. So the reason that we do that is because again, it makes a little bit of space in our music track for the dialogue to come through and be easier to hear. So let me just jump back here I'm gonna turn this off and then turn it on so you can hear the difference while the dialogue is speaking, while our voiceover is happening here, and you can hear a little bit of the space that gets made. It's a little tough while the music is ducking down, so maybe if we just turn that off real quick here, you'll be able to hear the difference. Let me play through that again. I'll do, turn it on and turn it off, and then we're just using band four here, so I can even turn the other ones off. They don't matter. Check it out. If you woke up one day and could do anything, what would you do? Who would you be? friends spend days on horseback so you could see that there right we didn't even change the volume but by cutting out those frequencies when band four was turned off here you couldn't really hear the voiceover very good but when we turned it on and we made a cut in those frequency ranges you could hear it through without even changing the volume of your background music track. So that's a handy tip. I definitely use that all the time when I've got music going on below any speaking or any dialogue or any voiceover in my videos. And the last tip here is a very advanced tip that I just wanna mention and I've got a whole video on it so I'm not gonna go into it too much in this video. But if you wanna check out the video about automation, you can head on over, I'll link to it uh, in the description below. I'll pop up a card over here, you can check that out. But essentially, automation allows us to change the volume over time and it's gonna automatically create some keyframes for us. For example, if I come over here and make sure that this is turned on my toggle automation, and then I turn on my automation tools, I can tell Resolve, hey, on this track, I wanna use my fader to change the volume over time. So I can play through my clip, I can record my changes, I can adjust my volume as the video is playing back in real time, and I can always go back, make changes after the fact, but it gives me the opportunity to just watch through the video, make changes in real time as far as the volume of the music or any audio parameter, uh, and, and really just sculpt it and make it sound the way that I want it to sound. Automation is really awesome. You can do so much cool stuff with it. There are a ton of different things you can automate. Pretty much anything that has to do with audio from plugins to EQ to dynamics, you can essentially automate or keyframe. It's like keyframing any of that stuff. So I'm not gonna do it specifically here because it's a little more in depth and it is an advanced uh, tutorial, which I have. You can check that out. So that is another way that you can continue to work with your background music here and make it sound awesome as part of your video. So I know I threw a lot of information at you guys there about background music and different ways and tips and techniques on how to make it sound the best that you can, help it sound a little bit more pro, how to get resolved to do some of the work for you. But by using some of these different tips and techniques, your music tracks and your videos are just gonna sound better and more professional. Speaking of making your audio more awesome, if you are looking for a one-stop shop to learn everything you need to know about making your audio awesome for your videos, Check out my course, linked in the description below, Audio Essentials for Video Editors in DaVinci Resolve. So a big thank you to Artlist for sponsoring today's video. Love Artlist, I've been using them for years. They've been a huge supporter of me and my channel. Really appreciate you, Artlist. If you guys need sound effects music, you need stock footage, you need templates for Resolve, check out Artlist. Maybe it's something that'll work for you. Link in the description below. And with that said, guys, get that background music sounding awesome, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.